Hi, I am Dr. Mehboob, MD of Thermology from AIMS, New Delhi. So the today's class is on a very important topic, which is important for the exam. A lot of MCQs have been asked previously over this topic, and this is a very common topic that is Eels disease, right? The Eels disease, the definition is saying that it's an occlusive. See, there are so many causes of vasculitis, and among them, the most common cause of vasculitis that is being diagnosed in a day to day life, and it is quite common in the OPD scenario that is Eels disease. Okay, it's an idiopathic occlusive peripheral periphlebitis. Periphlebitis means there is a vasculitis, vessels, veins ke around. There is an inflammatory things that is being taken place. Okay. It is most commonly occurring in the young males and especially in the Indian subcontinent. So you can think that why it is very important. Quite common in the Indian subcontinent. If you go in the western areas, this is not so common. They will not say that. Uh, our OPD has a common disease like Ills disease. They will find it quite uh, very in a very difficult way. So you have to understand the reason behind is that because most of the, I mean, uh, theories suggest that the Ills disease has a correlation with the tuberculosis. And obviously, you know that India is a hub of TB. So if you go by this data that, that the TB is the one which is associated with the Ills disease, then you can understand why it is very common in the Indian subcontinent. And you have to understand because and uh, actually um, some of the researchers do not agree with this TB. But in PGI Chandigarh, there has been a research which is going on from 12 years. Most of the evidence showing a significant correlation with the A of Ills disease with the TB. So you have to remember that Ills disease is associated with the TB. Also, not only, not always, but also. The second question that always being asked in the examination and MCQ is the most common cause of recurrent vitreous hemorrhage in a young healthy male. The answer is Ills disease. Now here I have to say you two things. If it is a young healthy male, then it is a Wills disease. But the most common see up cause of vitreous hemorrhage in old diabetic retinopathy. Overall, most common cause of vitreous hemorrhage is trauma. So these three things you have to remember. Now Ills disease is bilateral. Coates disease is unilateral because this can come in the uh, options point now that it can be bilateral, unilateral, something like that. So you have to understand that Ills is bilateral. Coates disease is unilateral. Mostly the Ills disease is asymptomatic because it's a you understand a peripheral phlebitis unless and until there's a vitreous hemorrhage or the inflammation is very high the visual morbidity will not be seen in this condition so it remains asymptomatic or it is a diagnosis incidental diagnosis if we have to diagnose this now what happened there are the three important phases inflammatory occlusive and the retinal neovascularization. So the vasculitis will take place. First there is inflammation. Then this inflammation will cause the occlusion of certain vessels. The occlusion of certain vessels will give rise to the uh, vasoph release stimulation and they will form the immature blood vessels. And because that is the new retinal neovascularization, this immature neovascularization are very new, new vessels. The new vessels are very fragile and they will bleed. Let me tell you. Can you see here? Three overlapping phases means there is no isolated phases. 
in the same eye you can see the inflammatory stage you can see the occlusive stage you can see the new vascular new vascularization means there's the inflammation of periphlebitis this inflammation will cause the vascular occlusion it will give rise to the vase of stimulation this vase of stimulation will give rise to the new vessels okay this new vessels will bleed can bleed and that's why i have said you that it's the most common cause of recurrent vitreous hemorrhage in a young healthy male so you after you exclude all the di possible diagnosis of this vasculitis you have to say that this is a ills disease so it's a diagnosis of exclusion very important so this is can you see here peripheral vascular seeding seeding it's a controversial someone says that it is a uh, part of the acute condition or it is a part of the chronic condition but most of the things most of the uh, retinal retino uh, retinal surgeon they say is that it's a part of the chronic condition so after the chronic inflammation after the inflammation the chronic becomes it becomes chronic the vessels there is a seeding can you see the signing area this is the new ves vascular network abnormal vessels vascular network you can see here these are the new vascular new vessels okay and this new vessel see in this area they can cause the block i mean bleed so they can cover the macular area and the visual acuity then they get distorted this can be the feature got it so this is about the eels disease condition now coming to how to treat a patient when the patient or this ills disease comes with a recurrent vitreous hemorrhage obviously if there is a vitreous hemorrhage vh for vitreous hemorrhage then you have to wait for 3 months and only after 3 months if not resolved then you have to go for then we called it non resolving vitreous hemorrhage and what is the treatment then we go for the treatment called vr surgery samajh me aaya i am say talking that vitreous hemorrhage in general if the vitreous hemorrhage is less is there you have to wait for 3 months okay for vitreous hemorrhage to resolve and if there is a not a non resolving vitreous hemorrhage then you have to go for the vr surgery so vitreous hemorrhage if there is a vitreous hemorrhage you have to wait now in since it's a type of vasculitis so you can give the periocular vasculitis like pst subtenant topical or systemic steroid anti tubercular treatment is considered in most of the cases because of its association with the tb scattered photocoagulation suppose what i have i was talking about the um vitreous hemorrhage na if there is a vitreous hemorrhage you have to wait for the clearance of the hemorrhage and after a follow up if there is a certain area that you can visualize then you can laser only na because for laser you the visualization is very important fourth is the intravitreal anti vegf obviously there is a new vascularization formation so you can give the intravitreal anti vege up in that condition and new vessels has to be has to be i mean lasered the at all last at all obviously all of us all of us know all of us know that if there is a i mean a new vessels formed the new vessels are very fragile right this fragile new vessels will bleed very easily and if at all they get healed they form a fibrous band this fibrous band can cause the traction and leading to the tractional rd so what type of the rd takes place in this condition tractional retinal detachment in coats disease it is exudative retinal detachment 
but in eels disease it is tractional lateral detachment so this is very important topic to understand hope you learned uh, hope you got uh, your concept clear from this thank you thank you very much